dashed against some rocky coast. They dropped four anchors from the stern and prayed for daylight. Let me read that again, please. For fear that we should be dashed against some rocky coast, they dropped four anchors from the stern and prayed for daylight. Would you stand with me this morning? Gracious and loving Father, I thank you for this service. I thank you for the praise team. I thank you for the worship leader. I thank you for the musicians. I thank you for this congregation. I thank you for our guests. I thank you, God, for bringing us into this place at this appointed hour. Now, Father, I ask that you touch this preacher from the top of his head to the soles of his feet. I pray that flesh would not stand in the way. I pray, Heavenly Father, that you would be glorified in your servant's delivery of the terms of this contract between you and me. We have labored through this word this week. You've spoken to my spirit. You've given me hope to keep on keeping on. So God, now I ask that you would speak through this vessel in the name of Jesus. to your people yes. that someone might leave here yes. Yes. with a new lease yes. on their spiritual lives. Yes. Be glorified. Yes. Let your church be edified. Yes. We know that Satan will be terrified. Yes. In your precious name I pray. Yes. Amen and amen. The people of God said, yes. you may be seated. Stay alert. Stay prayerful. Stay prayed up. Today I want to talk about anchors. Anchors. All of you have heard of or seen an anchor. If not, you can see one now. Anchors. Anchors can be large or they can be small. Well, they all do the same thing. An anchor is normally made of metal, and it's used to connect a vessel to the bed of a body of water to prevent the vessel from drifting due to wind or current. Now, this morning, I should like to share a single passage of scripture with you, one that I've already shared. But I must tell you that you must read both chapters 26 through 27 to truly get the gist of what I'm talking about. We don't have time for me to read those two chapters to you. But I believe that God has allowed me to give you a synopsis of those two chapters. So listen very carefully as I lay a foundation for this word. Now, the Apostle Paul has been arrested and has been taken up to Jerusalem. Yes, yes, yes. He's brought before the Jewish High Council. Uh -huh. Festus and other high-ranking officials believe that they have enough charges against Paul to both punish him and eventually kill him. Yes. Paul makes use of the fact that he's a Roman citizen and should therefore be tried before a Roman court. Yes. Festus realizes that his power to try Paul is fruitless. So he sends Paul before King Agrippa. Yes. Paul pleads his case with such power, with such passion, with such <laughs> conviction that King Agrippa has no choice but to grant him his wish right. to be tried in Rome. I want you to know that you have power as a Christian. Amen. You are a citizen of two countries. You are a citizen of the United States, but you are also a citizen of heaven. Amen. And you need to let the devil know that he has no control over you, that you have power and you need to learn to use your power. So Paul goes before King Agrippa. And Agrippa makes this statement. You almost convinced me to become a Christian. That must have been a powerful testimony. He tells the other officials after they have dismissed Paul that I see no guilt in 
what this man's been doing. And there's no reason why he should be tried. And there's no reason why he should be in chains. But, there's that word. It's an eraser word. But since he had asked to be tried before a Roman court, I have to grant him his wish. So Paul, along with some other prisoners, are put on a ship. And it's a ship bound for ports in the province of Asia. There's a Roman centurion by the name of Julius who was friendly toward Paul, allowed some of Paul's friends to come and minister to him before he left Jerusalem. He tells Paul and these other prisoners, we're going to board this ship and eventually we're going to get to Rome. Now I want you to know that sailing in those days required calm seas and friendly winds. The ship met with angry winds and contrary winds and angry seas. For many days the ship made very little progress. Their course had to be altered. The ship was so violently pounded by the storms that cargo had to be thrown overboard in hopes of lightening the load. Now scripture tells us that for many days neither the sun nor the stars could be seen. That's a storm sense. The, the perfect storm that you saw in the movie had nothing on this storm. Somebody turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, now that was a storm. 